Earlier I spoke about two dynamics we need to talk about. One was what happens to a bucket or an object within an environment, within its own context. Of course, a bucket doesn't exist by itself alone. It just doesn't stand alone neutral to any other influence. It in fact inherits what's around it in terms of colour and in terms of tone. For example, let's take this yellow cloth. Now, we can assume this to be, for example, a sand colour. It's an extreme sand colour and we don't really find sand that colour. But for purposes of demonstration, let's see what happens to the bucket when I place this under it. I'll lift the bucket up, throw that over. Now, put the bucket back in the same spot. Now, what happens to it? Well, there are surfaces here which will collect some of the colour as it radiates from the base. Which surfaces will collect most of that colour? Obviously the one that will will be those that are parallel to it, that, that act as a receiving, as a full receiving face. So this recess here would receive the full impact of the, of the reflected yellow under this lip would be the same. As I turn this around, this handle here would also receive the yellow very clearly underneath there. It's bouncing, the sun is bouncing down here, it's radiating that yellow off and reflecting back under here. So, and under that lip there, and under this lip here, and under that button there where the, the anchor is, is set. So, uh, this bucket will inherit the, the base colour upon which it sits. Now that being said, how do we adjust our painting to incorporate that added dimension, that added influence to the bucket? I'll go back and I'll mix up some yellow and we'll put it in the painting that we did earlier to show that. We'll talk about a perfect match, cadmium yellow deep, and that does match our sand colour. Now where on the bucket is that yellow announced the most specifically and directly? It's under that top lip. It's under the lip of the first recess. And then down the handle, down that steel handle. Of course steel is acting like a mirror, so it really is going to inherit that bounce colour. So sliding that up and down there from the first knuckle down will really show it. The white, of course, is like the second most important mirror area, apart from the steel. And the white base point of that handle is the one most adjacent to the parallel of the base cloth. And that's very yellow. At the base of the bucket, where the bucket curves and rounds and joins the cloth, that will, because it's the most proximate area to the cloth, it'll really inherit the yellow intensely at the very base. And then as we find that surface climbing up to the top of the bucket at an acute angle to the base, we will find that yellow just shuddering and finding its way up the side of the bucket. Right to the top in fact. And you know, it's just not on the outside where the highlight is that we find this reverberation of yellow, but we find it also in the shadow areas. So I'm just brushing that on there and discolouring it ever so gently just to reflect and to show and to announce the use of that yellow. Okay, you might think it looks a bit too yellow, but not really. It looks too yellow because the yellow is in isolation here. It's not part of the environment of the, of the whole bucket. But is it real or is it a little bit too over the top? No, it is pretty real. When we take this bucket to the beach and plonk it on the sand, you'll see it. You have a close look and you'll see that colour vibrating and finding its way up the side of the bucket and under those crevices and under the handle. It's there. Mark my words, it's there. And you've got to paint it and you've got to look for it. Okay, so never ever forget the power of the inherited colour. We're going to add one more colour to that bucket and show you how it affects the side of the bucket again. Remember, so far we've looked at a ground-based colour. What happens when you put one on the side? Let's have a look. I've positioned a pink board behind the bucket, sort of replicating maybe the sunset, because that's what colour comes with the sun setting. 
it goes through oranges and reds and pinks. Well, what impact, what effect does that have on the colour of the bucket now, as we see it? Well, as I move around from my painting angle, which is roughly here, I can clearly see a reverberation, an impact, a seeping through of this pink in here. And where's that coming from? It's actually coming through the bucket. So the pink is finding its way through one side of the bucket and impacting on this little zone here. Now, the next part where it does find its clear impact is down the side of the bucket, down here. That is adjacent in terms of the position, the direct feed, the direct reflection of the pink from the board onto the body of the bucket itself. So let's see how we can put that on our painting and then build it into it. Let's see if we can mix that pink. A little bit of rose colour plus some white and I reckon that by just pushing these two together, of course it's on the light side of, of a pink here, so that's about what I think we should match. Let's see if we've got a match here. Wow, there we go. How close can that be? Well, there's a bit of experience in that though, folks. Now, remember we said that where that rose came through, where that pink came through, and oddly enough, it came right through from the other side of the bucket and found its way on the inside and then reverberated through to this side. So we put that in. And we also mentioned that down the side of the bucket, we found that that pink also occurred. I've added a little bit more thinner here so that I can push that pink around, make it sort of bleed in to the other colour that surrounds it because it didn't really just come through in one block. It sort of shuddered through and reverberates through the plastic, both on that top section and down the side. So I'm going to let that pink just drift and find its way across and around into the yellow. So in fact, we've got three colours here playing against each other to give a, a real nice pinky glowy yellow colour. Now let me just say one thing here, that will also find its way back onto the handle. So the lesson here is the power of inherited colour. The bucket doesn't exist on its own by itself. It exists in the context of something else, other forces, other powers. In this case, we could see clearly the power of the yellow and the power of the pink. Now, I didn't really blend it throughout the entire bucket. I could have and maybe should have. But for powers of, of demonstration only, we can see that a bucket does receive and does inherit colours and tone from things about it. And we remember that when we paint because things bounce around from one part of the painting to the other. Okay, now the next dynamic.